first impressions, how do you like Amsterdam so far? It's beautiful. I've never seen a city like it before. I mean, with all these narrow buildings and the narrow streets. The Netherlands is really cool. It's like, it's very like condensed compared to like the U.S. But in a, but in a way that's like everyone's friendly and going by. It's really cool. I would like to welcome partners and friends from the Liberation with Europe Foundation who are here for a special occasion to receive the first vectors of the Liberation with Europe hiking trail. But of course I want to give a warm welcome to the guests of honor, the students and their teachers who came all the way from the US. Give them all a warm clap. Angel, you saw the vectors for the first time and you got to put your hands on them. What were your first impressions of the markers? So, first of all, I feel like just in general, like seeing the vectors and what they're supposed to mean is super important, especially for us to be able to like give them to the people to place them. Um, and we're like starting that, like um, I know the presentation said that we're like the first 10 students to be able to do that. I think that's really special in itself. I think also the design is like, it's done well enough to where it catches your eye. And so even if you're like not necessarily walking the trail, but you're in the area and you see it, you know, it'll catch your eye and then you'll read about it and then, you know, that can bring more people into the route. The vector's very heavy, so, uh, you know, not only is it uh, heavy figuratively in terms of like its weight of what it actually represents, but also the material that's used is also uh, quite large and quite heavy. My, uh, my fallen hero is actually the one that crashed around here. I was just looking at this plane right here and it turns out uh, it's the exact type of plane that my, my guy flew during the war. Uh, it's a spotter plane, obviously. Uh, he, uh, he, wasn't the, he wasn't the spotter, he was actually the one that fl flew the plane. But uh, uh, he was shot down just a couple miles around here, actually. Uh, I think it was uh, right outside the village of Eerdy. I am really excited that we get to be a part of the very beginning of the liberation route. You know, the beginning of this process of placing the vectors. So the first time we held the vectors, I was I had convinced myself that we were going to drop it. But I thought that they must be sturdy enough to withstand weather so they can withstand a drop to the floor. <laughs> It was really um, an experience to be there because you just imagine how quiet and peaceful it is now, just us walking through it, and you imagine the utter chaos and going on, and just war going on in those woods that had been around, and now we're just walking through it. It's really kind of amazing to honor them. I just know that it's going to be a great experience talking about these personal stories of these men that really gave their lives to the freedom of our country and other nations, and being here is also really cool to see how our two countries just unify about these same things. The graveyard was, I mean, when you hear about how big it is, you expect it to be big, but then seeing it, something completely different. I mean, just the sheer just number of like everywhere you look is just more and more graves. And it's, um, I think people coming here because of the route is really important because, you know, it, it you know, brings more people here to learn about history and it brings, you know, the, the future generations. Today we met the adopters for the first time and oh, she got a letter recent, like in 2011 saying they'd found his body and remains. She was able to go to the cemetery and place the rosette on the tablets of the missing to indicate that he was returned home. Lieutenant Sherry flew a tiny two-seat Piper L4 plane. In the back seat was a spotter who would observe the enemy positions and get on radio to tell the airborne artillery where to fire. We are at the Netherlands American Cemetery and I just got finished delivering my eulogy for uh, my silent hero, John M. Sherry. Uh, after all the preparations and work I've put into this project, it's, it's a big relief to be able to come here and deliver in front of the family that takes care of this grave because it, it puts it in perspective to where it's not just a number anymore, or it's not just a name, it's, uh, it's a person that had, that had a family and a life and they had to give all that up to, for, for us and I just I find that really touching. 
But McGee's American dream was cut short when he was drafted by the Army on New Year's Eve of 1943. It meant departing the job he dreamed about his entire life. It meant leaving behind his wife, who was finally pregnant after two miscarriages. Yet he upheld his duty to serve others, and in the summer of 1944, the newly Dr. McGee became Lieutenant McGee, a combat surgeon for the 17th Airborne. Today, a portrait of Captain McGee hangs in the halls of Nazareth Hospital. It reminds passersby of an American who set aside his dreams about what his country could give him, instead turning to what he could give back to his country. Uh, it was very interesting for me to meet you, uh, to see all the work that you've put in, obviously, and uh, for me to show off some of the work that I put in, uh, because I've been the adopter of Leonard McGee's grave for about 10 years now, 11 years. And in that time, I've uh, managed to acquire a lot of very special artifacts, including Leonard's uniform, dress jacket, uh, some of his medals, which have all been sent to me by uh, Terry McGee, his son. They showed us newspapers and notebooks and artifacts that we would have never been able to see um, otherwise. And it added so much more depth to the eulogy that I wanted to throw in last second, if possible. <laughs> We are currently in the Freedom Museum in a somewhat hidden room uh, due to the graphic material that's being shown here. It showed uh, dead uh, Auschwitz prisoners being thrown into a mass pit where they were then burned and buried. Um, and the description says that the people throwing them into the fire were also uh, prisoners of Auschwitz. Uh, and they were forced to do that by the German Nazi soldiers. The, the droppings right here historical background of the museum, historical background of the vector was the science to, to, to Berlin because Berlin wasn't possible uh, wasn't possible without this droppings right here in Grusbeek. Okay, okay, now you are going to install the, the, the vector. When he told us to put it up it made me really nervous because my arms were already tired and then like lifting it up <laughs> and then trying to stabilize it because it's like a circular shape and I didn't want it to lose balance. Wax mask. Wax mask. Wax mask. Whiskey mixer. Whiskey mixer. Whiskey mixer. Wax mask. One of the questions was um, how do you apply freedom in your daily life? So having to do that sort of self-introspection um, really made you think, what is your role as a citizen? I mean, we love to praise freedom, but are we really exercising it all the time? How can we exercise it more often? 